Squishing the bug and trying to use your toes to grip the ground to fire a punch is 100% wrong, and today I'm gonna to show you why. Hey guys, Dr. Alex here, Punch Doctor, CEO of Punching Power, and today we're gonna to talk about using the ground to increase the speed and power of some of your punches. Ground reaction force is nothing new in physics, biomechanics, or an athletic application. You've probably heard Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. When you generate force, like with your legs to push against the ground, the ground isn't gonna go anywhere, obviously, but you will. Pushing off the ground rapidly is how you launch into a jump, begin a golf swing, or even launch a punch. In order to understand this concept, you're gonna to have to forget what you know about the pivot powering your punch, including squishing a bug or curling your toes to grab the ground. These concepts don't get you using the ground in the most effective way possible and actually inhibit your ability to launch a punch. First, let's discuss the pivot. Pivoting your foot doesn't create power. It just rotates the leg. When you pivot, you're primarily rotating your femur, your leg bone, inside the hip socket. That's internal rotation of the rear leg. Internal rotation alone doesn't drive the hip forward. The focus should be hip rotation and not pivoting. Your leg will rotate internally naturally as you rotate your hips. However, it's an effect, not a cause. Second, let's discuss curling your toes to grip the ground. Do you curl your toes when you jump? Do you curl your toes when you push off into a sprint? Of course not, and there's a very good reason. When you curl your toes, you shorten the plantar tissues, the tissues on the bottom of your foot that you need to drive off the ground. Trying to curl your toes to grip the ground eliminates elastic loading of those plantar tissues, eliminates the spring mechanism, and kills the windless mechanism, the very mechanism that stiffens your arch and primes you to launch forward. You need your plantar fascia and foot muscles to tense dynamically as the toes dorsiflex or extend, like when you're launching into a sprint, to optimize force transfer during push-off. Instead of letting your foot work with the rest of your body to create forward drive, Curling your toes disconnects the foot from the rest of the chain and prevents your foot reflexes from assisting you in launching a punch. It is 100% incorrect to do. If you don't believe me, go try it right now. Try to jump with your toes curled or try to launch into a sprint while curling your toes. You'll feel it instantly. No other sport tells you to curl your toes for any movement and it's 100% incorrect to teach it in boxing. I'm gonna be discussing some concepts here that you might not be familiar with. So if you're new to this channel, I urge you to watch my Kinetic Integrated Mechanics reference video so you're up to speed with all the concepts that I'm gonna discuss. If you'd like to learn how to do these moves yourself with a comprehensive A to Z step-by-step -step program that retrains and rewires your movement patterns to use these mechanics naturally as part of your boxing toolbox, check out the Power Punching Blueprint today available at thepunchdoctor.com. Let's look at some pros using ground reaction force to launch punches, and then I'll show you some practical ways to do it on the bag. Let's take a look at some of Floyd Mechanics, who really is a, a great example of outstanding biomechanics when it comes to boxing. You're gonna see here a pole counter. You're gonna see Floyd lower his weight and that's part of the four phases of the punch, right? Load, explode, accelerate, follow through. You're gonna see him load his tissues and drop his center of gravity right here. Look at his weight come down. Look how he's on his mark, like a sprinter. Do you think his toes are curled there? Absolutely not. Just like a sprinter in the sprinting blocks, they are likely splayed out to assist him in launching his whole body forward. So he's lowering his center of gravity right here. And you're gonna see the hips go from back to front before his torso and his arm move at all. Right there. Now Floyd has great resting muscle tension, which is one of the hallmarks of athleticism. He has good joint integrity and he's very fit, obviously. If you have muscle imbalances in your hips, like with your lower back, or if you have a distended abs, like la lack of tone in your abs and obliques, you're gonna have to move your hips farther to elicit the stretch, because the stretch receptors have altered function when the muscle is stretched and loose. However, if you have even tension like Floyd does and Roy Jones Jr., you can get away with much less actual hip drive or hip rotation to elicit the stretch in the crossbody chains to power the punch. So you're gonna see the hips move forward right there, his arm and his torso 
are effectively in the same position. He's just moving his arm up to launch. So his weight comes down, hips go forward. Now everything starts turning. Right there, his torso is almost done moving. Right there, it's finishing, and his arm is continuing the trajectory that it's following. So his weight comes down. He launches his hip forward, right there. Now his torso and arm begin moving. His torso is reaching the end of its movement right there, and his arm continues their trajectory into and through his target. And now he resets and is almost immediately ready for a follow-up. Load. His hips start moving, then his torso, then his arm, and then his hips stop, his torso stops, and his arm keeps going. Almost just like a throw, hence throw your punch, don't push your punch. Here's an example of what I like to call the bounce step, which is what you might do if you're walking and then want to launch into a sprint. You're going to see Floyd start like walking forward and then quickly relax, drop his tissues, push off of that back leg and launch the punch. Let's wind it back and start in the beginning. So he's moving forward just like a normal boxing footwork, but when his weight comes down on his back foot, he lowers his center of gravity very quickly and launches off of that leg. You can see it go from bent to straight, and you can see that hip go forward. So he's launching his hip forward, driving it forward. Right about there, his arm comes out, and that energy that launch that he started with his legs and hips by pushing off the ground pushing off the ground not simply pivoting his leg or rotating his leg drives his hips forward it stretches those crossbody chains including the crossbody chains that cross the shoulder which allows a quick contraction or snap to drive that punch forward right into angel it lands very clean and that's one of floyd's go-to moves here you're going to see another beautiful example of a lead right off of a bounce step against Angel. You're going to see Floyd is taking a step forward just as you would. And now you're going to see when he would normally plant his right foot or put his right foot down just through his movement, he's going to lower his center of gravity very quickly and launch off of that back foot. You're going to see how his foot comes down and now it pushes off driving his hips forward. He hasn't really moved his torso or his fist relative to his hips, but they launch out now. And it makes contact, travels in an arc, like I mentioned, to increase stability at impact, to facilitate a good weight transfer. And now he's ready to throw another punch or re-engage with Angel. We'll look at it again one more time. He's just taking a step forward. And just as his right foot would come down as a normal step, he launches off of it, bounces off of it, off of his toes to drive his hip forward. Right here, everything starts to turn and come out. His arm comes out, lands, travels in an arc, and now he's ready to follow up right here with excellent balance and positional readiness. One more thing I want to mention is Floyd's timing against Angel here. Floyd times his right hand perfectly when Angel's weight has gone to his front foot. When his weight has gone to his front foot and he hasn't used that weight transfer to throw a punch, he's very, very vulnerable. In order for him to throw something in this position, he would have to, like Floyd, bounce off that right foot, which would take maybe a, tenth, a couple tenths of a second. And Floyd knows he can take advantage of that lapse in positional readiness to throw and land a punch against Angel. So just to reiterate, when Angel's weight goes forward and he hasn't used that weight transfer as part of a punch, he's vulnerable, and Floyd takes advantage of that. Here I want to show you an excellent example of Floyd using ground reaction force to power his jab to the body, which he does in almost every single fight. You're going to see him moving around, right, and then he's going to lower his center of gravity very quickly right here to push off of that back foot to push him from back to front. There's also a component of hip rotation to stretch the crossbody chains to allow a snappier jab. His weight goes forward, lands that punch at the same time he catches his weight transfer with his lead leg. And now his weight is caught on his lead leg. He's able to push himself right back. So excellent example of a jab to the body by pushing off the ground. Pushing off the ground from back to front to launch that jab. There's a hip rotation component as well, 
to stretch the crossbody chains, add more snap to the jab. He lands as his weight has transferred to his front leg where he's able to then push himself back out of range. So just beautiful jab to the body from Floyd. Here's a beautiful example of Floyd using the ground to power his jab. You're gonna see him push off his back foot to go from back to front. And there's a rotational component in his hips as well, which stretches the crossbody chains and allows for a more snappier, faster jab. I cover this a little bit in more detail in my Terrence Crawford video if you're interested in learning more. So you're gonna see him load his tissues right there, load, uh, dropping his center of gravity, pushes off from back to front with a rotational component in his hips to power the jab. So he loads his back leg, he pushes off, going from back to front and hip rotation, shoots out that jab, it lands on Philip, and he's right back out of range, ready for another shot, which he then throws to the body in the same manner I just showed you in the clip against Angel Man Freddy. I also want you to know, like I mentioned in the intro, if you're interested in learning these mechanics, I show you how. It's exactly what I show you how to do in my program with a step-by-step -step guide, drills and exercises for every phase, so it becomes part of your natural movement. You check out my program at thepunchdoctor.com. Now let's get into the practical portion of the video where I'll show you how to do a couple of these things on the bag with a little exercise you can do to help you learn the bounce step. Now the first exercise you can do to get a feeling for the bounce step is just stand with your feet about shoulder width apart, take a step back, drop your weight down, and then push off your foot. And you wanna push off the ball of your foot, and you can't do this if you're trying to scrunch up your toes. And you just do it with both sides. And you should feel like it's propelling you forward enough that your weight naturally wants to go forward and basically that's how you launch off your back foot bounce off of it to throw a lead right hand just like Ali did just like Floyd did Roy Jones Jr. so the bounce step step back bounce forward and you're gonna be in a position just like you would be if you were going to launch into a sprint Now, the next exercise is the mid-gate bounce step. So basically you're walking, right? And as your weight starts to transfer forward, and it's more than like 50%, you've reached the point where more of your weight is forward than back, you just bounce off that back foot after dropping your weight very quickly, and you power right into a punch. And all you gotta do is wait until you're Weight is somewhat more forward of your natural center, and you just push off. So you can do it slow, just like that. That's an easy way to do it. Take a step forward, and then bounce off that back foot. It's the same thing you might do if you're stepping up a stair, stepping up a curb. It's basically the same thing. You're bouncing right off of that back foot and launching your weight forward. So you take a step and you just bounce forward. It's really the same thing you're doing if you're skipping rope off the balls of your foot. It's the same type of reflexive mechanism. Now, are you scrunching your toes while you jump rope? I certainly hope not, because you're not gonna be able to bounce up like that. So, just to summarize, there's two exercises you can do for the bounce step. You're standing in place, you step back, and you bounce forward. And you should feel like that energy wants to go forward. And here's what it looks like in practice. So you'll see Floyd do a pull counter. Baiting. He'll pull. He'll, his weight will come back. He'll drop down and launch right into a punch. From southpaw. 
same idea. And when it comes to the bounce step, real easy. Just mid gate, drop down, bounce off. If you like this video, you're going to absolutely love my program, so I highly recommend you check it out. My program is called the Power Punching Blueprint, and it's an A to Z program that breaks down every punch into four phases and gives you drills and exercises for every phase and shows you how to put it together to maximize ground reaction force, to maximize speed, power on demand, and ultimately elevate your potential and potential success in the sport. If that sounds interesting to you, head on over to thepunchdoctor.com and check out the Power Punching Blueprint today. That's about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.